A few years back, my cousin was a sheriff stationed near Bend, Oregon. He resided in a small cabin up in the woods, just off the edge of a complex. After a late night shift one evening, he noticed a raccoon digging through his trash cans. While the raccoon scurried off towards the edge of the nearby thicket, visible under the faint glow of the cabin's security lights, about 60 yards from his front door. My cousin was fed up with the constant rummaging, so he stepped inside his cabin, fetched his night rifle, equipped with a night vision scope, and switched off all the cabin lights. He got into position from a concealed corner of his front porch. He couldn't see the critter anymore. Somewhere in the slow passage of time while waiting, almost out of nowhere... The whole forest became filled with an eerie and continuous low-frequency thudding noise. Not once or twice, but ten times in a row. He strained his ears. It was definitely not the wind, and he knew he wouldn't mistake it for the quirky sounds of Mother Nature, given his penchant for hunting. It was rhythmic, deliberate, roughly akin to the sound of a wooden hammer. Puzzled, he collected his information about such noises from other hunters around. Well... On a night shift, my cousin heard an eerie, similar noise again. This time, it was deeper in the woods, away from his cabin. He had been patrolling a stretch of forlorn back road, mostly used by loggers during the day. A thick grove populated by centuries-old cedar trees ran along one side of the road, while the other was covered by a dense line of blackberries and low-growing shrubbery. The narrow pathway was known for its desolation. Suddenly... In the stillness of the Oregon woods, he perceived a rhythm similar to what he had heard at the cabin. Slow, steady, and somewhat unsettling, but he dismissed it casually, thinking that his countryside house might just be playing tricks with his mind. But days would turn into weeks, and the sound was more and more frequent, not just in his cabin, but also during his patrolling shifts. My cousin, who's a seasoned outdoorsman and rational thinker, began severely questioning himself. Was it just his imagination, or was there really something lurking in the woods? One darkly quiet evening, while on a routine patrol, he noticed strange movements at the edge of the line of blackberries. He described the figure as unbelievably large, taller than any man he'd ever seen. It could not have been a man, or a deer. They don't stand that tall. This was unlike any wild beast he had encountered in his many years in the woods, and he couldn't match it to any known inhabitants of Oregon. But its huge size and upright walking stance was something more akin to a homo sapien life form. The creature was making its way through the shrubbery, brushing against the branches which caused them to sway violently. It moved with a swift yet uncanny motion. What frightened my cousin was not just its vital appearance, but the familiarity of that sound which now seemed to be sinking with the movement. He was shaken, yes, but he decided to investigate. He parked his cruiser with the headlights illuminating the shrubs and held his service pistol, just in case. As his leather boot crunched the gravel beneath his feet, the being seemed to disappear, but only for a moment. It quickly reappeared some distance away, among the dense trees, still making that rhythmic thudding noise. My cousin, with the feeling of dread rising, followed the noises, pushing his way through the undergrowth and deeper after this thing. Suddenly, the thudding ceased altogether. He stood still, eyes darting around as if trying to pick up any movement. The forest was silent except for his own breathing. Then, something metal reached his ears. A metallic clatter, as if something large was being dragged or pulled. It echoed through the forest... He described this as the strangest, most confusing part of the entire thing. My cousin was torn between his instincts. As a seasoned outdoor enthusiast, he knew when a situation warranted a swift retreat. But he was curious, and slowly and cautiously followed the noise at the far end of the path. He came eventually across an old, dilapidated shed, half consumed by the forest and time a leftover relic from when loggers had a functional camp there. He stepped carefully, looking for any sound or movement anywhere near him. The metallic rattling again, now louder, made him freeze. The shed door was barely holding up and was ajar. It shook rhythmically. The noise appeared to be coming from inside. He took a deep breath, gripped his gun tighter, and pushed the door open. The rattling ceased. 
There was nothing inside. There was a rusty logging chain swinging back and forth against the concrete floor. The thudding had stopped and now all was silent. My cousin, puzzled and greatly creeped out, decided to retreat and report this. Not because he was frightened or unprepared, but because he felt watched. He felt probed. This left a deep impact on him. He planned to never venture into that area after this. As far as what he saw, he's not exactly sure or what he experienced. It's been very clear in all his discussions with me, he's never encountered anything quite like this, and he'd prefer not to again. So my question for you is, what do you think? Even after him telling me, I'm not exactly sure what this was. Maybe it could be a Bigfoot? I'm not exactly sure. But sometimes closure and trying to make sense of what happened would be great. Last fall, while elk hunting in the remote wilderness of Oregon, I had an experience that's really been bothering me. My partner Tom and I had found a prime spot hidden in the thick spruce forest. We settled down, lying low in the underbrush. Tom, who suddenly elbowed me and whispered, Did you hear that? I strained my ears but couldn't pick up anything beyond the call of a distant raven and the rustling of foliage. Hear what? I had asked. He shushed me again. It sounded like a tree falling or something big hitting a tree. I shrugged it off, thinking maybe a decent-sized branch had broken off somewhere. We continued to wait in the silence, with Tom periodically imitating the bugle of a bull elk trying to attract a rival. We waited like that for about 45 minutes. Suddenly, Tom nudged me, signaling for attention. I turned, and he pointed towards a dense cluster of spruce just a few hundred yards off. I squinted but couldn't make out anything unusual, but Tom's persistent pointing made me bring out the binoculars. What I saw next seemed out of place. Amidst the forest dense greenery, two bright yellow orbs stood out. They seemed to be pretty high off the ground, roughly nine or so feet, if I'm estimating, and faintly glowing against the shadowy backdrop. I was quick to chalk it off as a trick of the light or potentially some sort of forest ranger's marker or a trail sign. I handed the binoculars to Tom, hoping for a second opinion. Tom focused on the area, and to my surprise, his eyes widened. He gestured for me to look again. As I focused on the strange orbs, a bizarre thing happened. It looked as if whatever was behind the tree was now peeking out from behind, and crouched down, still observing our position. All this time, it remained hidden, with just the glowing orbs revealing its presence. It was then the yellow glow disappeared into absolute pitch blackness, the forest swallowing its strange luminescence. After what felt like an eternity, but was probably a mere few seconds, the yellow glow reappeared, but this time significantly to the right of its original position, almost as if it jumped a solid 20 feet, Yet again, the entity, animal, thing, or whatever it was, repeated its earlier actions, peeking out from around a tree before crouching low once again. It was a sight I've never experienced, despite my years of hunting and camping across Oregon. Tom and I both tried to rationalize the sighting, trying to think of what animal could possibly mimic such behavior and have such unusual eye shine. We've stalked and hunted varieties of game all across the seasons and have come across many flora and fauna, especially at night. But this was unexplainable. We sat endless minutes under the eerie silence, wondering what we had just witnessed. After all, people talk about weird stuff happening, but this was different. We decided to search the spot at sunrise, maybe even capture pictures to satisfy our curiosity. But the next day brought us no further to clues to our odd encounter. I'm still not exactly sure what we saw, but whatever it was was definitely observing us. Every time I close my eyes, I can still see those glowing orbs high off the ground. Anyway, thanks for reading my experience. Sorry if it ran a bit lengthy. I appreciate it. This happened in my former home of Bend in 2012. Nestled in the heart of the state and known for its scenic landscapes, among it being a complete hippie town, Bend is surrounded by national forest and even a large desert area to the east. I was 23 then, attending a friendly bonfire gathering at a comrade's property. 
Bend is a vast known town with various neighborhoods, out of which my friend was Falls Creek. The local felt isolated, far from the city and veering more towards wilderness with thick woods enveloping it. On this summer evening, we set up camp outside, with some folks indulging in alcohol while I and another guest were not. The backyard was filled by dense evergreens from an adjacent vacant area. After the sun, the other guy and I ventured out to the open place through a nature-made trail right between the trees, sitting back to back against the tree line overlooking the area. I recalled a clearing, a vast sloping hill with a solitary tree in the middle, about 150 yards away. The whole area was partially lit by a faint glow emanating from a lamp post situated along a road on the right. To the left lay further dense tree lines marking the boundaries of other plots. We'd been absorbed in a conversation when a strange sound interrupted us. It reminded me of a dog sniffing, almost like tracking a scent. I could still hear the others carrying on on the party just over our shoulders, and the sound didn't continue for long. I looked around, but didn't spot anything that could have made that sound. Quelling the unease, we resumed our chat. Now let me clarify here. Bend is populous with wildlife, including black bears, as is much of the Pacific Northwest is. Having lived in this region and spent considerable time outdoors, I confidently recognized their movements and sounds along other predators native to the area. However, the odd shape-shifting creature that I was about to witness did not fit into any known categories. As we're deep into our conversation, the strange sniffing sound emerged again, this time only louder. It felt as if it was coming from every direction around us. Strangely, our friends of the party seemed oblivious while we were growing increasingly anxious. The next moments were when things took a strange turn. The guy I was with froze on the spot. Following his gaze, I turned towards the sloping hill, and under the tree, I saw this daunting figure in the low light. It was as big as a bear, standing about seven feet on all fours, sniffing the ground with its head bowed down. This large specimen was loud unnaturally more so than a bear would typically be, yet the most unsettling observation was its locomotion. When it moved away from the tree, it did so upright, on two legs like a human would. The silhouette was alarming as its limbs stretched out from the side of its trunk, resulting in a very odd and asymmetrical gait. The dark figure was massive and presented itself unmistakably as something I could not recognize. As it perilously staggered away, the movement was nearly spider-like, a sight I couldn't make any logical sense of. Its girth was lined with what looked like long, dense fur, basking under the light lamp. The figure seemed earth-toned, between dull green and drab brown. Breaking away from its investigation of the ground, it sprang up, flailing while letting out a distressing scream, making the atmosphere even more precarious. My companion and I instinctively recoiled, bumping into each other as we moved backward. The thing seemed to become aware of our presence, stood still for a moment, and slowly limped away. My heart was nearly beating out of my body. Simultaneously, silence had now fallen over our backyard gathering. The strumming guitar, the laughter, even the crackling of fire just seemed to fade away in the backdrop of panic, and having heard the sounds that this animal made. The air was now anxious, filled with bewildering uncertainty, dare I say, even fear. My friend and I scrambled to our feet, cautiously returning to our group, standing together, staring at us from the edge of the property. My eyes were still locked on the figure, now about to disappear into the woods across the property, its odd saunter continuing as it moved away from us. It was then that our group finally stirred to activity. Discussions broke out with everyone trying to comprehend what we had encountered. Was it some unknown species? Was it a mutated bear? We don't know. But we understood that it was something that we wouldn't normally encounter. Now, the rest of that night was pretty uneventful, but man, that memory still creeps me out to think about. In the summer of 1972, a creature dubbed the Rogue Beast was reportedly spotted near the outskirts of Rogue River National Forest in the state of Oregon. A local named as Dave M. claimed his encounter with the creature while on a trek towards a campsite. 
The creature, according to Dave, was a furry bipedal creature roughly the size of a deer. Its head was oddly shaped, triangular with sharp ears and a pointed face. It had a dense, dark brown coat, and it reportedly let out terrible screams as Dave approached. Interestingly, Dave noted that its gait was odd, with its legs pointing outwards from its body, giving its movements a strange, almost insect-like quality as it scurried away. A few years later, during the fall of 1982, the rogue beast was reportedly sighted once again, this time in Jackson County near Prospect, located near Crater Lake National Park. Two locals drove across a secluded road, late at night for some deer spotting using their car headlights before the hunting season. They wanted to see how populated the deer herd had become in the area. What they came across, however, was far from what they were anticipating. The night was chilly, and the unpaved road leading towards the forest was uneven and muddy due to the previous day's rain. Taking the lead was Gerald, an engineer by profession and a hunter by passion. He drove his classic Chevrolet van while his longtime friend and hunting partner, Stephen, was seated in the passenger seat, his eyes squinting for any sign of deer movement in the headlight beam. At approximately 1.15 a.m., as they were slowly navigating a narrow bend in the road, a strange creature emerged from the tree line darting across the road. Caught in the sweeping glow of the headlights, it appeared to be an enormous animal, the size of an average deer, but it bore little resemblance to any known species in the region. The creature was covered with dense, dark brown fur, which glistened eerily under the headlight. It displayed a triangular face, reminding Gerald of a bat, with eyes that shone like tiny orbs. But what struck them the most was its gait. Oddly enough, it was bipedal, its disjointed limb movements giving it a strange, insect-like impression. Frozen in shock, their vehicle came to a screeching halt. The creature darted across the road, letting out a deafening shriek that echoed all throughout the trees, escalating their terror. It was unlike any sound either of them had ever heard, and it was disturbingly human-like. As it disappeared in the dense undergrowth, they were left in a stunned silence. The once peaceful forest appeared far more sinister, and they sat in the car, trying to comprehend what they had just witnessed. Decades have passed since that last sighting of the rogue beast, and both Gerald and Steve, now in their 70s, still recall that night. Shared around many dinner tables and campfires, their encounter still remains a mystery. What is the rogue beast? Was it a mutated creature? Perhaps an alien? Or are there other Oregon residents that will come forward and share their own experiences? I guess time will tell. I want to recount an event that happened to me back in November in 2015. At the time of the year, I would be bunking down in my little cabin at the edge of a forest in Oregon. I was working as a ranger then, preferring the solitude of the wilderness brought after my stint as a firefighter. As part of my routine, I tended to drift off to sleep on the couch in front of my fireplace, the flickering light the only thing breaking the inky darkness. My cabin, small as it was, had windows on all four sides, giving me a panoramic view of the forest around. Given my experience in the line of duty, I've always had my old service sidelock pistol handy. Now, I've always been a realist believing only in what I'd seen or experienced firsthand. I had no time for ghost stories, and UFOs were a laughable subject to me, much to the chagrin of some old friends back in the city. But all that skepticism would get torn down on that cold November evening. I remember being awoken with a start from my slumber, a sensation as if something wasn't quite right wriggling at the back of my mind. My eyes flicked open to see a soft white light glowing through my front window, illuminating the shadow interior of my cabin. I blinked groggily, at first attributing the luminescence to the waning fire. But as soon as the idea formed in my mind that a larger, vivid blue light had ripped through the window, it tore me out of my sleepy stupor. I squinted against the brightness, my mind racing to make sense of the situation. Could it be a late-night hiker in trouble or a lost tourist? Quickly grabbing my sidelock pistol from the coffee table, I made my way towards the window, peering outside. 
What I saw out there shocked me to my very core, making me momentarily forget the freezing cold of the cabin against my bare feet. Standing there, in that little cabin, that was the start of my story. And there, casting these strange lights, was something I can barely comprehend. An object, fairly large, cylindrical in shape with shimmering in human blue and silvery lights emanating from its body. It hung in the air, midway between the snow-covered branches as silent as the night itself. I could hardly believe what I was seeing. My mind struggled to make sense of it. I shook my head as if trying to wake up from a vivid dream. This wasn't what I was expecting in the middle of the forest. With a pinch of courage and a dash of curiosity, I decided to step out. Tucking my pistol into the back of my jeans, I zipped up my jacket and put on my boots. I slowly opened the cabin door, its frost-bitten hinges creaking and cracking, breaking the silence of the night. I took a few hesitant steps towards the object, and with each step, I noticed more details. Geometric shapes being projected onto the snow, impossibly complex symbols I had never seen before. Suddenly, the object moved, a soft hum it had not been making before cutting through the cold night. A series of shimmering lights pulsed from it, between the beats of my rapidly escalating pulse and the soft hum of the object, an alien chill hooked its claws into me. My every instinct screamed at me to turn back, to bolt for the cabin and lock the door behind me. But I continued step after step towards it. It was as if something was drawing me in, a compulsion I could not resist. I had to know what it was, what was happening. Against the pulsing rhythm of my pulse drumming in my ears, I moved closer. As I neared the object, to my shock and increasing fear, it fixed its blue lights on me. In fear and awe, I stopped dead in my tracks. A few yards from this alien structure, this out-of-place anomaly in the darkness of the woods, at once and without warning, a blinding beam of blue light engulfed me, and silence. When I awoke... It was morning light streaming into the cabin windows. I was back on the couch, my pistol lying on the coffee table where I had left it the night before. I rubbed my eyes and tried to get up. There was this sensation of time lost, an unexplainable vacuum, and a blurry memory of the bizarre lights. Outside, the only evidence the incident had even occurred were footprints leading from the cabin and then disappearing in the snow. They were too large for a man, and they were no boot grid patterns, just smooth soles. I have no idea who or what it was. I only know that, whatever happened to me, it changed my perspective on life. Greetings. I'm based in the rural areas of Oregon, a landscape characterized by woods, sprawling farms, and a few solitary traffic lights dotting the remote areas. Coming to the focal point of my tale... It's a secluded township, encapsulated by Mother Nature at its rawest. Almost every morning, my nephew, a sprightly ten-year-old, and I would embark on a nocturnal journey through the labyrinth of backroads. Our mission was straightforward, deer spotting. One evening, we found ourselves cruising down a desolate road. On one side, there was a seemingly endless expanse of pine tree farmland, while on the other... Woods and brooks furrowed into the depth of wilderness. These being familiar terrains, we continued at a slow pace, hoping to catch a glimpse of a wandering deer, a common sight around here. Suddenly, from the depths of the left side woodland emerged something that I could only describe as wolf-like. Its immense size, easily eight feet, was something akin to a figment of imagination from folklore, or a horror flick. It progressed awkwardly across the road, just about 20 feet ahead of us, an unusual laboring motion that gave me an impression of it being unaccustomed to four-legged locomotion. It bore a strange stride, much like a human being trying to shuffle on hands and feet. Now, the most striking aspect of its strange anatomy was its hind limbs, possessing an extra protrusion or joint of some sort, giving it a weird, uneven, strange gait. At this point, I was at a standstill, staring enthralled and taken aback at this thing slurping its way across our path. As I was saying, it was a sight to behold. 
we could only gawk in amazement at its dark, matted fur that seemed to ripple and twist, lending it to an air of otherworldly. Considering how it was caught off guard, its actions were remarkably calculated. It seemed to me as if it was accustomed to evading curious onlookers. What left us astounded, though, were its eyes, these enormous glowing orbs that seemed to reflect the full moon hung overhead. Their size was out of proportion, as large as serving platters even bigger than you'd expect on a typical moose. And I couldn't help but wonder if this is what inspired the Native American folk tales or maybe something else. Its gaze fixated on us briefly while crossing the road. A gaze that felt like it bore into our very souls, before it carried on its strange loping hop. The creature's tail was another physical attribute that pushed the boundaries of regular mammalian anatomy. It extended a good three, four feet, swishing listlessly in the air as it moved. The sighting took place within a matter of moments, but felt much longer, perhaps due to the unreal nature of the encounter. My nephew and I were dumbstruck. Not a word was exchanged throughout the incident, let alone any attempt at getting a picture. As it reached the farmland, it disappeared into the neat rows of tall pine trees, leaving a rustle that gradually faded into the nocturnal symphony of crickets and owls. Now back home, we shared this unforgettable tale with our puzzled relatives. Our uncle simply suggested it could have been a bear with mange. A cousin thought maybe a lost kangaroo, but none of these species' descriptions matched what we'd seen. I just hope I'm not the only one who would witness such a strange thing. And reading this, I hope it might encourage others who've spot something similar to come forward. From Central Oregon, over and out. This experience happened to me in Medford, Oregon. Now, I'm not saying that what I saw was a legit cryptid, but I've been searching for what it could be for possibly up to five hours now, only to hit a brick wall. Look, the best I can come up with was a grizzly bear. But here's the thing. This area doesn't have grizzlies. I first caught sight of it when about 100 yards out, emerging from the woods with a gait similar to that of a wolf trudging through thick snow. It was almost midnight black, save for its unusually large, reflective eyes that shone eerily back at me, roughly as big as tennis balls. Its limbs were slender, like those of a deer. But let me put things into perspective when I say it was twice my size, and I stand at a decent six feet. The fur was long and seemed somewhat unkempt. The creature's face bore an uncanny similarity to that of a fox, while a tail, approximately two feet in length, trailed behind it. Now, as it moved, its lips drew back almost as if it were snarling, like it was not too pleased to be caught off guard. But it did not slow its pace, covering the full width of the otherwise desolate street before it approximately five long strides until it vanished into the dense assembly of trees on the other side. Now, I quickly texted my friend, who stays across the street, about the strange encounters, only to be met with a snide comment likening the creature to a fox buck. But frankly, I just want to know if anyone else has come across anything similar in these parts. It's worth a mention that our encounter occurred around the back roads of Medford, specifically near Oregon Route 62. The creature had a very fox-like face, and it was devoid of any antlers. To be sure of what I saw, I decided to go for a cold morning walk the next day, just as a follow-up. Dreadfully cold for an October morning. Our good old town was typically quiet. There was still fog lying low, and my breath felt almost solid in the chilly air. I didn't feel unsafe, but I was straining my senses to the maximum, trying to capture even the most minute noise or movement around. The places where the leaves had been rubbed off, more like trampled on the forest border near Route 62, were indicative of something heavy passing through. I followed the path that this animal seemed to have taken, maneuvering around broken branches and upturned stones. That's till I reached a small clearing with a low-lying bush. I discovered what looked to be a small makeshift den that was extremely crude, but no physical proof or evidence of this supposed creature. I decided to install a trail camera close by, almost hidden by the foliage, with hope of getting a glimpse, but nothing to this day. 
Well, actually, about four days after, I did capture this strange, hazy, upright figure, but nothing definitive or really worth posting online. If I get something much sharper and much more in focus, I'll try and send it.